Welcome back my World 2 family, it's Abraham, supervisor here at South Coast One Academy. And in tonight's episode, we got a very special guest. He's our newest member of the World 2 squad, Matt Arnold. Yeah, my <laughs> know him as a Warrior Welding Texas. And in tonight's video, he's going to be doing some aluminum welding. So check it out, guys. What's up guys, my name is Matt Arnold, like Abraham said, um, owner operator of Warrior Welding LLC out of Dallas, Texas. Um, former nuclear weapons specialist in the United States Air Force, uh, faculty welding instructor for Dallas College, and also own my own gig. Um, if you can check out my last video, this is my second one, I did a sanitary stainless tube video a couple months back. Um, check that out, but today I'll be doing some aluminum plate for you guys, some half inch 6061 T6. Um, showing you a little bit about how hertz and how the different waves affect the bead as far and as well as different gases adding a little helium in here and there and the difference on the penetration so that's the plan for today so stick around and check out what we got coming hey, all right guys? yeah yo thanks brother yeah, i hope you like it yeah my initiation into the crew appreciate it boss thanks man isn't that badass get yourself one All right guys, like I said in the intro, we're gonna be doing some aluminum welding today. So as you can see here on the table, I got some coupons set up ready to rock and roll. It's half inch 6061 T6, just tacked together. Um, have a pretty extensive background in aerospace and robotics especially. So we deal with a lot of thick aluminum where a DC straight aluminum welding process isn't really that practical. Um, a lot of times they need the aesthetics of the AC and if you know anything about welding aluminum with a straight DC arc, it's dirty, grimy, it's very deep penetrating, but it doesn't have that look. So the time it would take to do a DC straight weld and then an AC over it, it's just not very practical for the industry. So they prefer everything to, to be done on alternating current from start to finish. Um, today I'm gonna be using, again, like I did on my first video here, my Dynasty 210, it's my trusty little guy. Um, I was hoping to use a bigger machine, I'm not going to lie, but it's in use on the other side of the shop right now, so we're going to use this guy. Hopefully it works. So if you're ever tasked with welding anything half inch, even quarter inch and up, there's a few things on the machine itself that you can do to give yourself the benefit of the doubt, because it's not a hard weld to make, it's just a few things that a lot of people don't know how they work, especially new guys coming in and women coming into the field. Um, so I'm just going to explain different wave balance and what hertz do to help put more heat into your puddle okay so on any inverter machine you have the ability to adjust certain things unlike on a traditional transformer type machine so on my dynasty we can click here on ac wave shape and we can adjust our balance that's pretty typical so this is our ac wave and an alternating current wave is both positive and negative dc with the wave going through, right now we're set on 50% balance. So our line's going through the middle, we have equal parts positive and negative, okay? So the positive part of the arc is our cleaning action. It helps etch the aluminum, has the oxide layer, helps get rid of that. And the negative side of the wave is actually our heat, our penetration, okay? So the more percentage we have on our balance, the more heat input and depth of um, penetration we're gonna have on our aluminum puddle. So on my particular machine, we can go all the way to a 99% <clears throat> straight wave balance and all the way down to 50%. So to, for today, since we have decently clean material, I can run, I'm can i gonna run about 85% balance. So I'll have 85% negative side, so I'll have that nice hot penetrating arc, but still have some positive side of the wave to give myself a little bit of cleaning. Um, another thing we can do is our frequency. So the frequency is in Hertz, as it says here, the H is for Hertz, and the Hertz is how many times that wave cycles per second going back and forth over that line, okay? So right now at 60 Hertz, that's your traditional off the pole AC coming into your house. So any transformer machine is gonna be set on 60 Hertz and 60 Hertz only. Um, with an inverter-based machine, I have the ability to go all the way down to 20 Hertz and all the way up to 400 hertz, which sounds just like a swarm of killer bees. It's for super thin, precise metal. Um, if you're going over that wave 400 times a second, you're not getting very much heat. So it's really only good for very, very precision, 
thinner materials, if you will. So on thicker metals, the lower the frequency, the more time per second you're gonna have of that negative arc wave going into your, into your puddle. So 20 is a little bit too low. So we'll stick with 60. We'll try to keep it even across the base, depending on what kind of machine you might have at home or buying if you buy a transformer machine. I just wanna keep it relevant to both sides. So we'll leave that on 60 with our balance of 85%. One other thing we can do, that's just on the machine. So on the machine side, that's about all we can do. One more thing we can do, let's talk about a little bit of different gases, okay? When it comes to aluminum, especially thick aluminum, helium is gonna be your best friend, okay? This is ultra high purity helium, hospital grade. Um, very hard to get. I was able to get this bottle myself. I just been in the game a minute, so I know some people, but this is, if you're going out and looking for a helium bottle, this is about an $800 bottle of gas. It's super hard to get these days. There's a huge shortage. So it mostly goes to hospitals and stuff like that. And the welders kind of get it last. So if you can get a bottle, get yourself one, but they are getting harder to get. And this here is just a regular standard, standard argon bottle with a Y splitter. So I can introduce more and more helium as I need it. But to get started, the first thing I'm gonna do, we're gonna do a couple tests, okay? So out of these three coupons I have here, this one I'm gonna to attempt to weld with just 210 amps, straight argon, okay? No preheat, straight argon, if I can even get it to melt. It's still up in the air. This one here, I'm gonna use a helium mix in, in with the argon, still no preheat. And on this one here, I'm gonna use a preheat. I'm gonna to try to get about four to 500 degrees into it plus helium mix and see how that one works out. All right, well, stand by guys. Let me get set up and we'll get rocking. All right, guys, so this here was like, is the first one, no preheat, no helium, just straight argon, max the machine out as high as I can go, 210 amps, um, 60 Hertz and an 85% balance. All right, so let's see what happens if it even welds. Super slow, just the bead just pretty much sitting on top of the plate. Really no penetration at all. Sometimes it's kind of thinking about it, but this is not the way to do this weld. I just wanted to show you guys so we can compare what adding a little bit of helium to this puddle is going to do for us. In theory, it should turn my little 210 into, you know, almost about a 300 amp machine. When you add helium into your puddle, helium has a higher um, heat conductivity. So it transfers more energy and it's also less dense than argon. So it's like adding nitrous to your car, doing the same thing to your puddle. So making your puddle much, much hotter and really helps out in these kind of situations than it going out and spending, you know, an extra 16,000 bucks on a new Dynasty 800. If you pick up a gig like this, maybe you're a small job shop or something like that, and you got to get by with what you have, and helium's going to be your best friend. And as we start to get a little bit of heat into this material, it starts welding a little bit, but by now we're about halfway across this plate already. And it's still not soaking in. You can start seeing a little bit of porosity popping through. Pretty much a mess, to be honest. Man, that's terrible. This is our second coupon here, guys. Same thing, no preheat. The only thing I did was add a couple cubic feet of, um, of helium into my, into my gas mix. So I'm running probably about a 70-30 mix right now, give or take. So we'll see how that acts on our puddle because that first one was, was really bad. So hopefully this one works out a little bit better. And then our next one, we'll throw some preheat at it and that one should flow nice. But let's see 
by just adding a little bit of helium into our mix, what that'll do for us, all right? Still fairly cold. Not getting a really, really fluid puddle. But again, it's a 61 degree plate. So it's fairly cold. A much, much smaller machine that's really needed them to do this. And we're getting a little bit of weld on here. The toes are starting to wet in pretty decent. Now that we're getting a little bit of heat in the plate. It's slow. It's going to be interesting to see the results of the edge. I am curious. Preheated this one to about 250 degrees and we're going to lay into it and it should help out quite a bit. So still with the same mix, 70-30, a little preheat thrown at it and let's weld her up and see how this one works out. Oh yeah. Immediately wet the puddle out. I use a little bit more electro-positive on my wave. You can see it kind of the puddle's a little bit dirty, but it's definitely penetrating real nice and wet all the way down in the throat. So it definitely use a little more cleaning action on it. Stepping forward about an eighth in. Stick and move. Stick and move. Get a nice consistent dime set. It's not like Miles to is staying there for you to leave the wire in the puddle or you do a bunch of quick dash as you're moving continuously. I'm really moving my tent to intentionally get that spacing set up perfect for that nice stack of down look. And the tent. All right, guys, so we got our three uh, coupons here. You guys just saw me what, or saw me weld. The first one I have is the one I ran with no preheat, um, no, ar no helium, just straight argon, 210 amps. And it's what we expected, pretty much zero penetration. It's got a bunch of porosity coming through it. Real nasty looking. I did, gave it a quick slice just so I could take a peek at it. And it's what I expected. The weld's pretty much just laying on there. Probably popped this off with a hammer pretty easily. Um, so that's a, a huge fail, but it's a starting point that we can build on. That was really the purpose of this video to see what you can throw at a weld to make it different, to make it work. Okay. Besides getting a bigger machine. So that one huge fail. We'll throw, toss that aside. The next one up again, no preheat. Uh, we just threw a little bit of helium at it. It did help a little bit, picked up our travel speed a little, let those toes of the well wet in a little bit, still getting some porosity through it, but. It is, it's much better than our first attempt, but still not what we needed, okay? Our last one here, still all the same machine settings. We never touched the machine after we started the first one. Um, same exact gas mixture. The only difference was we preheated this one to 250 degrees, which isn't astronomical whatsoever. And what a difference that made. Just throwing a little bit of heat at it first. This was a 12 inch coupon. So because aluminum likes to really kick that heat out almost like copper it um you're really having such a low amperage machine adding any bit of heat out of the gate can really help so preheating and a little bit of helium in that mix really really made a world of difference a nice wet puddle nice size about a 3 8 fillet weld single pass and just looks great so two minutes of preheating and that's all we needed and what a difference from the first one to the last one side by side i mean it's not even comparable same exact machine settings little preheat and a tiny little bit of helium and it's a completely different different outcome completely different puddle i'm gonna stick with this one <laughs> thanks guys for tuning in again i'm matt arnold newest member of the weld tube squad um the reason i did this aluminum today is i'm just trying to think of something different to bring to the table for you guys so if you could please, if you have any ideas, anything new, anything that hasn't been done before, alloys, different kinds of configuration, even fabrication, 
comment down below, give us some ideas so we can really push this page, get some new content, get new viewers and so on. And um, I just want to say we really appreciate all the love and the likes and subscribers on YouTube. So please like, please subscribe, tell your friends, come back and see us. And uh, like I said, if you got anything you want to see, anything at all, please reach out and we'll try to get a video made for you guys on anything you might need. So until next time, we'll see you.